And so we see, hallelujah, that the curse of Isaac is on Esau to this day. Isaac cursed Esau directly years before, but he, he knew that when Isaac would make the oath to do good to his brother Jacob, he knew he would break it. So Isaac pronounced this curse upon the person who breaks it. But he gave Esau the benefit of the doubt. He knew Jacob would keep to the word of God. He knew Jacob would walk before the Lord. He knew Jacob would keep the covenant and teach his children to do so. But he knew that Esau would break it. So the curse is upon Esau till this day. They're mighty. They deal with war. They, they're rich. They're in the secret places of the higher echelons of society. They're always hiding their identity, but they're there. And they control things because the Lord Jesus, Yahusha said, the times of the Gentiles will be upon those that dwell in Jerusalem. They will live in Jerusalem, the Gentiles, until he comes to set up his kingdom. So Yahusha is coming back. So this is the time when Esau and the nations turn against Jacob. The time of Jacob's trouble is after the rapture. Now it's already starting to escalate. It's already the beginning of sorrows right now. And we see this taking place right now. But it's not going to end so well for the nations of the world that turn against God's people. We look in the book of Revelations and we see this. God is going to deal with the nations that trouble the 12 tribes of Israel. In particular, Judah. Benjamin and half the tribe of Levi. We see this in Joel chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. You'll see it there. So people, the word of God is true. If you want to know what's coming up, the rapture is coming up. This is a time for people to get themselves right with God because the, all the trouble in the world all culminates around two brothers, Esau and Jacob. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of that which shall come after. All that which is going on in the world right now, it basically involves the nations taking sides. Many individuals amongst the Gentiles are going to side with Jacob. And the Lord promises that he's going to bless them. But the multitudes are going to side with Esau. They're going to get, get caught up in the world system of the Antichrist. They will take the mark of the beast and they will come against the children of Israel to destroy them. But you will see that the Lord will protect the nation of Israel. They will sprout wings and fly into the wilderness. According to Revelation chapter 12, you read the, the symb symbolic language there. And... The earth will, will, will suck up the trouble that will come against Jacob. That means many of the Gentiles, God will stir them up to be as a buffer until, on, on behalf of Jacob, until the Lord comes. Now the Lord will also miraculously spare Jacob, the remnant of his seed. In the time of trouble. And God is going to give Gentiles the opportunity to choose. Take them in if they're on the run. Feed them. Clothe them. Shelter them. If they're in prison, visit them. If they're hot, sick, go to the hospital and be with them. And when Yahusha, Jesus Christ, comes back, he's going to say, Come ye blessed of my Father. Because when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was hungry, you fed me. Yes. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was sick, you were there to help me. When did we do these things, Lord? When you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. Times are going to get tough. World wars are going to occur. But things start small. And they escalate if they're not checked. So Jesus, Yahushua said in Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. We're seeing that right now. 
these little altercations right now that you think, oh, there's no nuclear explosion. It's coming, folks. It's coming. This is a time that God has given people to prepare either for the rapture by casting their cares at the feet of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua Mashiach, repenting of their sins personally, saving themselves, because you can only save yourself as a Gentile. You cannot save your nation. The nations are going to be destroyed. You can only save yourself. Judeans, they can only save themselves too. This is personal. Anyone that comes to Jesus now, it's personal. You can only save yourself. But what's going to happen to the nations after the rapture? It is written in the scriptures. The scriptures will be fulfilled. Most of our black diaspora people, most of our people are going to die because of the deluge that's coming. Because the nations don't like black people. They respect them. They respect them. They like individuals amongst them, but by and large, no. Look at Africa. That's a clear example. The colonial nations, they take up all the resources out of Africa and Africans cannot even come out of debt. Did you know that the biggest debts in the world are African nations? How did they get in debt? They're poor. It's ridiculous. There are many people speaking out against it that are not African. They say it's ridiculous. But the biggest, the, the, the countries that have the biggest debts are African nations. Africans can't take out precious metals out of the land and do business and, and create industry in Africa. Can't do it. They can only do raw material uh, types of business. They cannot manufacture in Africa because that will make them independent from anywhere else because they have all the resources. It's the richest continent on earth. So if they manufacture stuff, they won't need anyone else. God forbid that from happening. So they're respected, they're admired, maybe even envied. Oh yes, but they're not loved. Only individuals are loved, not the nations, not the entire nations, African nations. You have to understand this. You've got to see what's going on. Because the word of God must be fulfilled. Oh my God. And yet, the Africans are most the most accommodating nations to all other peoples. Yeah. Well, the scripture must be fulfilled. It is the living God that will spare them. It is the living God that will spare the black diaspora around the world. If it wasn't for the hand of God, we would all die. Our people would die. How do you get millions of people, over a hundred million people, crossing the Atlantic Ocean like sardines in a can and survive? We are the survivors. We are the descendants of the survivors. It's the hand of God because the word of God must be fulfilled. Jacob is the beginning of that which shall come after. But the nations that side with Esau, they don't worship God. They're heathen nations. And the only reason why there's no wars right now is because the Lord is holding them back until the people that are to be saved out of all nations come to Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach. That's what we're waiting on right now. And after a while, when that number is reached from all nations, because the Apostle Paul warned the Gentiles, he said, listen, God has not cast off Israel. The casting, the partial casting away of Israel has been for Gentiles to come in. And when the fullness of the Gentiles come into the body of Jesus Christ, then the, day, the door of Gentiles will be shut. The rapture will occur. We'll rise to meet the Lord in the air. We'll be with him and watch from heaven what will take place on the earth because the scriptures must be fulfilled. We will watch it from heaven. I actually had a dream and saw this. 
I was in the house of God, clapping and singing, praising the Lord. We were raptured, gone, taken up into heaven. And it was glorious up there. But then the attention was on the earth and it was a, like a sea of glass and we were looking, all of us that were up there were looking down on earth and we saw the mayhem that was happening. And I was one of those that said, Lord, how long before we joined unto our brethren? And I heard the booming voice, powerful yet sweet. I heard the voice of the Lord speak until the time of the end. Did you hear that? That's what I heard in my night vision. It's going to happen, folks. It's in accordance with the word of God. This is very serious and it will come to pass. The scripture says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, Only he that now letteth will let until he be taken up out of the way. Who is he? Christ in us, the hope of glory. So if you're in Christ Jesus, you are in the Mashiach, Yahusha Mashiach. When he comes to connect his body with his head, that means the body of Christ with him. And we're taken out from this realm of existence into the heavenlies. That's when these things will take place on earth. Because right now, all the trouble that we're facing it's only the beginning of sorrow. But when the Lord Jesus, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, leaves this earth, taking us out of here, there's no restraining order from all the mayhem that will happen on earth. And God's attention will be on earth to protect the 12 tribes of Israel, the remnant of the seed of Jacob, so that his word be fulfilled. Consider these words. And if you are not saved, get saved. If you are saved, keep your hands clean and your heart pure. Because these are the days where the love of many shall wax cold. So keep your heart pure. Let love abide. In the name of Yahushua Mashiach. Stay righteous. Live holy. And look for your, your king to come. Because he's right at the doors. Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat. Shalom. The one and all in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. Jesus Christ.